Hello, welcome to episode 35 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, 1,000 movies you must see before you die, 1954's Voyage to Italy, or Journey to Italy, directed by Roberto Rossellini, who I've heard of, but had never seen anything from. Uh, so this is my first experience with a Rossellini film, Italian director, and this film stars the very famous actress Ingrid Bergman, who I believe at the time of this film was with Rossellini. They had had a relationship and I think this was towards the end of their relationship and this film is very much a breakup movie I first heard about this interestingly enough while I was listening to the audio commentary for Before Midnight the uh, 2013 film directed by Richard Linklater the uh, the third film in the Before trilogy with Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy and the three of them the director and the actor and actress are talking about the film and they talk about Voyage to Italy and their thoughts on it during the commentary and so I thought I'm gonna go watch that so I went and watched it and I, I, I kind of felt like they hyped up a bit too much for me they were saying that it was this this, this devastating heartbreaking you know beautiful film and it wasn't quite that for me I really enjoyed it um, I thought that it was a very well made film I thought that Ingrid Bergman in particular was was brilliant you have George Sanders playing um, her co-star in the film uh, they play a married couple who have been together for a long time and they go to Italy, they voyage to Italy because um, I think it's the the, the, the husband, uh, someone in his family, there's inheritance, there's a house that they're going to sell, it's in Naples in Italy, so they go over to Italy for like a, you know, a short trip uh, to sell the house and then go back. Uh, and when they're in the first scene of the film, they're driving in their car and they, they're not really saying anything to each other, they start talking and they begin to realize that this is kind of the first time they've actually been alone with each other uh, where all they've, they've got to do is talk to each other in a very long time and so they kind of face the realities of their relationship and their marriage uh, now that they've been forced together because he's a workaholic, he's always working and now he's not and so again they see maybe the flaws in their marriage and whether they even want to be with each other anymore and, and then that part of it's quite sad and as they go to Italy uh, Ingrid Bergman's character, she she starts remembering someone she used to know um, and you know he was a poet and she she's more of a kind of more of into the artistic or more more of a sensitive person uh, and so she's remembering these poems and stuff of this this guy who who you know died years ago and her husband seems to be maybe jealous of that and there's this whole play going going on between them the, the, this married couple that uh, that plays out very inter interestingly over the course of the film uh, and there's a lot of um, little little twists and turns there. Nothing, no, nothing major, but it, it feels like it's always underneath the surface, and you kind of there is a very good feeling of what the characters are thinking without them saying it because the performances are so good, particularly again from Ingrid Bergman. Uh, I loved the kind of the second half of the film where we just see her walking through these places. She goes and visits these. Uh, you know, like museums uh, and places of interest in Naples, uh, which he isn't interested in. So she goes, she goes and does it, and we're almost—it's almost like it almost turns into kind of a a tourist film in that respect. But just with Ingrid Bergman walking around, as, not as your guide, but kind of as your 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 look into it. You know, your eyepiece, I suppose, where she's walking around and seeing these things, and you're seeing these things too. Um, but it's also not just, you know, I, I'm kind of making a joke about it being like a tourist film, but th there is kind of something to be said about her going and, and looking at these things that are kind of old and larger than life maybe and finding some meaning in life. There's this um, place with all these skeletons and so on. and it's very There's a lot of good themes there, I think, that you can kind of delve into and, and kind of pick apart if you wanted to. Um, but at its surface, um, as a film, I thought it was... It was really good, if not great. Uh, is it a film you must see before you die? I would say no, which might be controversial because I know that it is seen as a classic. You know, it's, it's been rated one of the greatest films of all time by quite a few people. Uh, for me, the ending didn't quite cut it, um, and I'll kind of I'll do a tiny little spoiler talk at the end of this. But yeah, but by the time that the credits rolled, or, or you know, by this point in you know in the fifties, there were no credits at the end. It was all at the beginning. But by the time the film had finished, and I was sat looking at a blank screen, I kind of felt a little bit cheated, maybe, um, and, and that yeah. So it didn't really cap it off the way that I wanted it to, um, and it didn't quite toy with my emotions as much as I thought it would either. Um, but it did grip me. It, I, I was invested in the character, or at least the character. Uh, that Ingrid Bergman played. I didn't feel too much um, 
sympathy or interest uh, either way towards the, the husband. If not, I felt more negative things towards him. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think it's, I think it is it's a great film. I think, but it's not one that I would would put up there at all uh, as one of the greats. And I, I don't really think you'd be missing too much um, if you didn't see it. So, uh, quick spoiler talk. The ending, uh, you know, the whole the whole movie is building towards them splitting up. In fact, by the last act of the film, you know, they they agree on a divorce. Uh, and they kind of keep up appearances, and they're driving uh, down to this town, and she's talking about how it's the fact we didn't have a kid that's, that's pushing us apart and stuff, and they get out of the car, and there's this big parade, and they can't move and stuff, and, and they're like, yep, that's it, we're done, we're finished, and then off he goes, and then she goes in, she chases him through the crowd, and then they're like, oh, how silly were we? And then they kiss and make up, and it was just completely superficial and didn't seem to fit uh, the, the characters, the tone, the story, the film whatsoever. Um, but interestingly enough, I kind of knew it was coming because when I was listening to the Before Midnight commentary, as I said, um, Ethan Hawke and Richard Linklater were saying how depressing the film is, and it is kind of depressing and sad. There's a, there's a lot, there's a very melancholic feel to it, which I'm usually drawn to, and I was kind of drawn to it, but I wasn't, I wasn't all in for some reason. Um, and so they talk about the ending. Oh, no, they don't talk about it. They say that the film is depressing. And then Julie Delpy, who with the female perspective, she says, well, no, it's a, it's a happy ending. They, they make up at the end. And then Richard Linklater says, well, nah, no one believes that ending, do they? That's just a fake ending, you know. So in, in his eyes, that's kind of just like a, a weird swerve that didn't really happen. And I don't know if I buy into that really because it's pretty plain and, and put there in front of you. Um, it feels like Rossellini was trying to make a breakup film and then he kind of just pulled the plug at the last second and knowing that he was with Ingrid Bergman at the time I believe and their relationship was maybe going down the tubes at the point maybe it was kind of his his autobiographical thing coming through but also showing his his maybe his desire of not wanting to end it I don't know either way for me the ending didn't quite gel it all together at the end but you know if, I mean if you love films and stuff definitely give it a watch but it's not an essential must see before you die kind of film for me and I'm, I'm pretty pretty firm in stating that so there we go voyage to italy thank you for watching